Hello to all you in YouTube world. My name is Scarlett, and I am an atheist and skeptic in progress. I like to contemplate matters of life and philosophy, especially what gives us meaning and purpose. I'm back with another set of questions for atheists. This time it is from a blog site called Geeky Christian. It has a nice picture of the thinker in this late summer setting. Maybe the fall leaves denote the end of one's philosophy? Who knows? Sean Nelson's picture is here, so maybe he is the author of the questions? Well, we're going to assume that's the case. I think this particular list is meant to help other Christians evangelize and challenge non-Christians on their beliefs. I don't see a comment section here, so it doesn't look like it's meant as a real start for a conversation on this page. To its credit, it does have questions for other religions. There are five questions for Hindus. There are 10 questions for Muslims, and there are loads of questions for Buddhists, divided into categories like existential questions for Buddhists, follow-up questions for Buddhists, and more and more questions for Buddhists. And we have nine questions for those in Taoist Buddhist folk religions. And LOL at number nine, would you like to hear about the one and only god, Shang-Ti, whom even the great emperors worshipped? <laughs> yeah, right. There's also a section for agnostics. It's pretty short and mainly focused on the strength of belief. But enough of that. We're here for the questions for atheists. Instead of answering each question individually, I'm going to group them. I'm doing this in part because the blog asks a lot of similar questions multiple ways, but also I see that some of these are just assumptions about what science says or how the world works, so it's not really worth addressing each one in full. With that in mind, let's see these questions. Number one starts out appropriately enough by evaluating my certainty and looking at evidence. Numbers 4 and 5 ask a similar question, that things exist even though we can't see them, like our mind or gravity, the wind. So maybe God is invisible, but he still exists. We can't see him, but he's there. First off, yeah, I think these are all fair questions. This is a good start on talking about atheism. So am I absolutely sure some God doesn't exist? No. I don't see any evidence for him. I see people claiming things that prove God, miracles and healing and answered prayers, but some of that is bogus, and other events strike me as the work of someone else, a doctor healing an illness, for example, or just random, you get money after you pray. I don't know why you got money. That's an unevaluatable thing. It can be hard to evaluate someone's story. They could be lying, misinformed, or just plain wrong, they might mistake correlation for causation. As for invisible things that exist, yes, but we see the effects of wind. I can feel wind on my skin. I can see things move thanks to the wind. Gravity can be demonstrated. Mind is the emergent property of our brains. I cannot see any evidence for God that cannot be explained by something else. So sure, maybe he's there, and maybe he's really well hidden, and his effects are easily mistaken for physical phenomena, but I need something a little bit more than maybe he's there, he's just invisible. So this next set, it's most of the questions actually, and it's a long set. It all has to do with philosophy and science and origins, and so I'm going to name all of them and then I'll talk about them. So number two talks about intelligent design. Number three says nothing cannot produce something. Number six seems to imply God caused the Big Bang. Number seven posits that something cannot come from nothing and something must have always existed. Number eight is the watchmaker again, an intelligent being producing intelligence. Number nine is weird positing that an effect cannot be greater than its cause. And what a weird assumption. Anyway, number 12 says that if it takes an intelligence to create a universe in the lab, wouldn't we need a super intelligence to create the universe? 
Number 13 is the story of a glass ball that gets large. I guess this is the Big Bang. Anyway, doesn't something need to cause that? And doesn't something need to have caused the universe? That one is a whole weird anecdote. Finally, number 14 is a variation on the creator thing. And 15 is the fine-tuning, don't we need a fine-tuner argument. So, lots of questions with presumptions about how the universe came into existence. Without going into all the problems with the questions, I just want to address how I go about pondering origins. I listen to scientists, the ones who directly study these things, and so far I don't hear anyone saying that we need a deity to create the universe. I find science super interesting, but I'm not a scientist. What I understand is that at very large scales and very small scales, the physics is different, and there are phenomena that do not obey our earthbound common sense ideas about the way stuff goes. Whenever I read anything about quantum physics, one thing is clear. Shit is strange. In any case, God is supposed to be this all-powerful, miracle-producing being. Why does he need to follow the rules of science? In fact, don't miracles defy the usual rules of the way things work? Miraculous instant healing, sticks turning into serpents and back again? Theists seem to want it two ways. God is both the lawgiver, your scientific laws, and the lawbreaker. They want his work to follow the laws of physics when needed and dismiss it when convenient. The thing is, so far, when we start looking, we see explanations that don't need a god. And I still don't know why some perfect eternal being decided to muck around with these humans that are so imperfect, and he needs to punish them and get sacrifices from them and all that. That's an answer I would like. But in any case, it doesn't matter how the universe got started. While religion may have stories about the origin of the universe, our world, and all the beings that inhabit our world, that doesn't mean that the story is correct. You need to actually demonstrate that the story corresponds to reality. Otherwise, it's like, cool, neat story. And just because I don't know the answer, and you claim to have one, doesn't make it the case. So returning to our questions, the final two concern morals. Number 10 is, is anything wrong anywhere? What in the world? What a strange way to word this. And number 11 is about a moral lawgiver. I guess God has to be a moral lawgiver. I get that it would be easier if we could simply make a list of acts and say they are always absolutely and entirely wrong. But life is not that easy. And we have to contend with the fact that we have imperfect knowledge of events. We don't even always know the motivations of people. Humans have been working out rules now for millennia, and our laws have a specific verbiage for reason, because actions are contextual. We often have language about motive, so that we can evaluate not just what harm was done, but a perpetrator's mental state. When you see a not guilty verdict, when it is clear that some wrongdoing occurred, you have to ask what crime was being alleged and what needs to be demonstrated. So even when there is evidence a specific person killed someone, for instance, what was the charge? Manslaughter is different from homicide. And then you get into was the murder planned and to what extent and so on. It's not as simple as person X killed person Y. The other fact of the matter is that crimes occur, but there is not enough evidence to convict someone. It is unfair, but this is down to what we can know. We also know that people are wrongly convicted all the time. All this is the imperfection of being human, after all, and it is why a god is a tempting thought. How great is that? A being who knows everything and will punish you perfectly. Of course, in Christianity, that's not true. There are all manners of bad things that happen. There are people that are killed and people sent to a lake of fire for the simple crime of not believing in God. But to get back to our questions, to find out if something is wrong, we need to establish a few things. What does it mean to be wrong? Does it mean to cause damage or harm? To what extent? How much do we take into account the mental state of the person causing harm? But 
We don't need some divine being determining right and wrong. We humans can determine that. We are social animals who organize life around society and community, and we can make rules governing our behaviors. We might disagree about what they should be. I'm not sure if it makes any sense to say there is an absolute right and wrong somehow. But in short, humans are the lawmakers and the lawgivers. We decide. Even in the case of people who say their morality comes from God, They really are going into their holy writings to support what they believe. And who knows where their writings come from? All our evidence says that these writings came from humans. Well, that's where we're going to leave these 15 questions, which actually comes down to just a couple of questions, really. I've been Scarlet, giving my life meaning and purpose by making this video. If you liked it, you can, well, YouTube like it and all that stuff. You're on YouTube, you know the drill. And if you have answers for some of these questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.